what is up everyone welcome back to another episode of history behind the horror i'm your host tay and for tonight's video we will be talking about tim from wick we were supposed to put every antagonist from this game into one video but there is so much information on each character that i decided to just split them up into separate videos so also before we start the video i'd like to thank everyone who liked our last wick video who shared it and the ones who subscribed after watching that one if you did and the ones who left a comment about the video and what they thought about it um it wasn't for you guys this video wouldn't even be possible so thank you so much for that and if you do enjoy this video and you like to see more wick characters very very soon or even right after this video make sure you guys like the video share the video and put in the comments for what character you would like to see next or if you'd like to see a totally different horror character from a different horror game uh, make sure you guys also put that in the comments and i'll make sure that i get to that as soon as i can so with that being said as always thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight and as always i hope you all enjoy the video Thomas Weaver, known as Tim, was a boy who lived on Mount Todd with his family in the 1920s. He had a twin brother, Tom, and three other siblings, Benny, Caleb, and Lillian. His parents were John and Mary. Tim seemed to have done whittling as a hobby. His keepsakes include a whittling knife with his name carved into it and the mask, which are described as being carved. There is audio of Tim suggesting that he made the smiling mask for someone whose bandages were coming off. In the audio for the broken mask, he can be heard asking his mother if whoever will receive the mask, most likely Tom, will like it. The audio accompanying the knife is Tim telling an unknown person, very coldly, you hurt him and I'll hurt you. This audio suggests a grave situation in which Tim may have gotten into a fight and may explain the bloodshed on the hilt. It seems that Tim was willing to hurt people to protect someone he cared about. This person may be Tom, but it is not confirmed. In the photograph evidence, Tim could be seen standing with his siblings in front of their family's woodshed wearing their Halloween costumes. What seems to be a simple family photo becomes more complicated and sinister as other evidence is thrown into the mix. In the review with Mr. Edwards included with the photo, he states that at Pine Creek Summer Camp, Benny was known to preach about twin brothers stolen in their sleep by the devil. Furthermore, journal page 11 reveals that there were no records of the Weaver family having twins. This is supported in the news archive evidence and the newspaper clipping in journal page 21, in which the Weavers are cited as having only three children. It seems that for some reason, the twins were hidden from the public and later completely disappeared. Journal page 17's audio is Pastor McElroy reprimanding Mary for bringing changelings to his doorstep. Journal page 34, Tom's page, has Duncan come to the conclusion that there were changelings involved. In European folklore, the changeling is said to be a creature switched from a human child by a fairy or other mystical creature. In actuality, children accused of being changelings often had unexplained diseases or disorders. Because of this, as well as Benny's claims that his brothers were stolen by the devil, it is possible that Tim and Tom are the changelings. The audio with page 34 involves Mary praying desperately to God to wash away her sins, all while two babies are crying. At the end of the audio, a strange roar can be heard. The babies are most likely the twins. The origin of the strange roar is unknown, but may be related to the changeling situation. The audio with the journal page 11, Tim's page, has Tim asking Mary why we can't go home. He asks if she even loves them anymore and if she has spoken to John. He also states that it's so cold out here. He speaks in a distraught voice. It is possible he is speaking of himself and his brother Tom, suggesting Mary was keeping the boys from coming back home and forcing them to stay outside in the cold for an uncertain reason. How Tim died is unknown. It is possible that his bloodstained knife is involved. Another theory is that Tim died from some sort of asphyxiation due to his constant wheezing as a ghost. Either that or his hollow breathing is due to an illness he had in life. Nothing can be concretely said on this matter, however. 
His three other siblings, besides his twin, were later the victims of a strange occurrence in which their family's house burned down, which killed their mother. Their father hanged himself in the woodshed. The children, however, went missing. As well, their bodies were never found. It is possible that the twins had actually went missing way before this event, as Benny was talking about them being missing when he was still alive but it seems that they all had become violent supernatural beings somehow due to this event. The twins were involved in many people's disappearances. One of the first ones known to the audience chronologically is shown in the Sunday worship event. After Pastor McAlroy attempts to cast out the strange shadowy being reckoning havoc in the church, Tim and Tom appear suddenly, standing in the doorway. Tim is seen walking nonchalantly towards the podium, while Tom teleports in front of the pastor and presumably chokes him to death. In the interview with Old Man Edwards from page 17, it is revealed that the church had been burned to the ground, leaving a black pit with nothing burned around it. No one saw the pastor after that. Later, Tim was involved in the disappearance of paranormal investigator Travis T. Bubber Burton. On Halloween night in 2014, T. Bubber goes on his last legend trip to the Weaver property. He takes the children's keepsakes and put them at random places on the map, which seemed to anger their spirits. After that, T. Bubber was eager to leave, but the children gave him one last chase which led him to the counselor's cabin in the camp. Someone hits T. Bubber with a shovel, killing him. His body was never found by the police. It is interesting to note that Tim does not join his siblings in this final chase. Hi, it was you. A year later, the Weaver children antagonize Sam, who was playing Wick at the behest of his friends. Sam spends the night collecting the children's keepsakes. How he dies is not clear, but he is seen with rotten skin standing before the children who appear more welcoming than violent. Tim is standing next to his twin brother and Benny, his arms behind his back looking at Sam with his head tilted to the side. It can be assumed that the kids made him his own grave next to theirs in the graveyard. The police never find his body. Kids used to play in the woods, then one by one, disappear. People used to come up here and leave stuff in case the kids were still alive. They left candles burning, but the candles moved in the night. Really? Nobody would let their kids come up here after that. Like that poor kid last year? Maybe they ran away? No, it was her friend who disappeared. What? Did you see that? Something's out there. 